So in this video, we're gonna take a little bit of a detour. We're gonna talk about the difference quotient, which is not something that's tremendously important to what we do in a pre-calculus course, but it is gonna come in handy a lot in a calculus course. And so we're gonna talk about it now, more or less because we're coming off the backs of the video where we talked about how to evaluate functions, and in particular, how we can input an expression into a function. Right, so we talked about in one of the previous videos how if we had a function like f of x equal to 3x squared plus x, we could actually add an input, maybe say something like x plus 3, and input that entire expression into our function by taking that expression and substituting it in for every instance of x in our equation. And so this would look like three instead of times x squared times x plus three, the quantity squared, plus instead of x, x plus three, the quantity. And so because we've just been practicing that, now is a really good time to talk about the difference quotient because we're gonna have to do that a lot when we evaluate a difference quotient. And even though this is not otherwise specifically relevant to what we're doing now, it's gonna be good as a way to prepare for calculus where we're gonna to have to evaluate the difference quotient quite a bit. But all right, I'm sure at this point you're wondering, what even is the difference quotient? Professor G, just get to the point. And so we can define the difference quotient here. The difference quotient is just the expression f of x plus h, right? So here we're talking about the expression x plus h, that quantity has the input, plus f of x divided by h. So we're gonna take the function f of x with the input of the expression x plus h and add it to the function itself and divide everything by h. And this is specifically for when h is not equal to zero, right? Because we don't have a good way to define division by zero. And so we're gonna have to define this specific quotient just when h is not equal to zero. And this looks like a really crazy expression, but because it's so integral to calculus, it's all the more important that we get some practice in preparation of that now. And so let's see how we can apply this to some examples. Let's let f of x be negative 2x squared plus x plus five. And let's see if we can start to evaluate the difference quotient for this function. We'll break this up into steps. First and foremost, we wanna make sure we can evaluate f of x plus h. And then once we get that result, we'll plug it into the bigger expression. So f of x plus h, again, remembering here that this just means we're inputting the expression x plus h. So that whole quantity that's inside the parentheses there, the x plus h, is gonna get subbed in every time we see x, right here and here, in our original equation. And so we can say this is equal to negative two Right? Here's our first instance of x. So instead of writing times x squared, we'll write times the quantity x plus h squared. And then we've got plus. Here's our second instance of x. Instead of just writing x, we will write plus the quantity x plus h. And then of course we have just plus five at the end. Now you'll notice that I'm being really careful here with my parentheses. That's gonna be really, really important because when we're talking about that input, the quantity x plus h, it's important that we keep that quantity together as we start to manipulate things algebraically. And parentheses are the tool at which we can use to do that. So it's really, really important here to be careful with our parentheses. Be careful with our parentheses and make sure we're always writing this out with those there on the outside, signifying that that x plus h is its own quantity. From here, we can start to simplify. We've got negative two times the quantity x plus h squared. Of course, when we square something, that just means multiplying it by itself twice. And so we can see this would be x plus h, the quantity, times x plus h, the quantity. 
and then we can continue plus here we can see the parentheses are a little bit superfluous since we have just positives and so we would be able to drop them at this point and say x plus h plus 5 and then we can continue simplifying by foiling this expression. Now we'll have to think back to algebra class here when we talk about foiling which is just an acronym for the procedure that we can apply to multiply two binomials. Binomial meaning they have two terms, right? The X being one, the H being the other. And so when we want to multiply those binomials, we'll do them in order of firsts, outers, inners, and lasts, or foil. And so what we'll do here is we'll say this is negative two, again being really careful with our parentheses, times the first times the first, or x times x, which is x squared. The outers, so x times h, so this would be plus xh. The inners, which is h and x, so this would also be a plus xh. And the lasts, h and h, which would be plus h squared. And then I'll carry down the, oops, carry down the plus x, plus h, plus 5 from the line above. We can simplify this a little bit further, right? We can see here that we've got two like terms, two terms of xh, and so that will simplify to 2 times xh. And so we have negative 2 times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And again, carrying down the plus x, plus h, plus 5. And then we can begin to distribute this negative 2, giving us negative 2x squared minus 4xh minus h squared plus x plus h and plus 5. And now, since we have no more like terms, this would be our fully simplified result. And since we're going to need this for the difference quotient, I'm just going to go ahead and copy that and move it up here into the corner for us to save for later. So now let's take that piece that we just did and see if we can fill it in to evaluate the difference quotient itself. The expression f of the quantity x plus h minus f of x over h. And so if we want to simplify this expression of the difference quotient, we need to start with this piece f of x plus h. Now fortunately we have that already up here and so we can just literally take that whole piece and plug it right in, giving us negative 2x squared minus 4xh minus h squared plus x plus h plus 5. And then we have minus f of x. Again, this is going to be a really important place to keep track of our parentheses. When we subtract f of x, we're subtracting the quantity f of x. And so we want to make sure we include that entire quantity in parentheses. So again, when we do the minus f of x, make sure we do minus and then put the entire expression in parentheses. So this is really important to be careful with here because it's a really, really easy thing to forget and it will drastically change your result in the end if you do forget it. So make sure we always remember to be very careful with our parentheses. But once we do remember the parentheses, we can take our expression for f of x straight from here and plug it right in. So we've got negative 2x squared plus x plus 5. And this entire expression is just the numerator all divided by h. And now we've got to look to see what we can do to simplify. There are some like terms in the top here. We've got some negative signs we need to distribute. So that might be where we start first. And so if we carry down minus 2x squared minus 4xh minus h squared plus x plus h plus 5, we can then distribute the minus negative 2x squared to get plus 2x squared. We can distribute the minus to the plus x to get minus x and distribute the minus to the plus 5 to get minus 5. 
and once again, dividing the entire expression by h. And now what's really nice about this and what kind of tends to happen often when we evaluate the difference quotient like this is we're gonna have a lot of terms here that cancel each other out. So if we look, for instance, we've got a negative 2x squared and a positive 2x squared. Those are gonna cancel each other out. We have a positive x and a negative x. Those are gonna cancel each other out. We have a plus five and a minus five, and those are gonna cancel each other out. And so when we go through and we cancel each of those terms, what that's gonna leave us with is a minus four xh minus h squared plus h. And what you'll notice here is that every single one of these terms remaining has an h in it, right? And that's typically gonna happen, at least for the most standard examples of this, because remember, we still have that denominator of h, so we're still dividing this entire expression by h, and that's gonna allow us to cancel that term out. And so if we cancel out an h from each of these, we will pull an h from this expression. Instead of h squared, we'll get rid of one of those, so we'll just have an h, and then an h from here, leaving us with minus 4x minus 2h and plus 1. And so when we simplify this all the way, we'll have negative 4x minus 2h plus 1. And this would be our final answer for the difference quotient. So hopefully you enjoyed that little preview into calculus. This is just a small piece, of course, of that overall course, but it will be useful when you get there and get to talking about one of its big main ideas, specifically the rate of change. For now, at least, it's a good exercise in evaluating functions, and so it will hopefully help you get better and better with working with some of these pre-calculus skills. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.